Welcome everyone to a special broadcast. Today with us, we have the CEO of Metastage, Christina Heller with us, as well as the CEO of Departure Lounge, James Hursthouse with us to talk about the launch of Metastage Canada up here in the beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. So welcome to you both. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us. Thanks see for you. having us. <laughs> yeah. So the first question to you, Christina, I think it's important is to distinguish the difference between volumetric capture and motion capture, which is what you know most of us are, are used to seeing in, in movies and games and whatnot. So can you explain that for us a little bit? Well, I'll start by saying they both fall into the realm of 3D performance capture, but they and they both have advantages and, and challenges. Um, volumetric video or holographic capture is really intended to be a faithful, totally authentic reconstruction of whatever happens on the stage. So unlike motion capture, you know, as a performer, I don't have to put on a special suit. I go out in whatever clothes or costume I'm wearing for the, the, the final experience. And all we on the, on the capture side say is action. They or the person, the performer does the performance. We capture that performance from every angle using, you know, 106 machine vision cameras. And what you get on the other side is a, you know, exact replica of whatever happened on stage with the most authentic um, capture component possible. Mocap is really more intended to puppet animated assets. So, you know, you're capturing a performance that is then getting applied to an animated asset, which has its value too, um, but doesn't have the faithful like authenticity of volumetric video. Excellent. Well, yeah, You know, if you think about it from the puppet perspective, rather than the actual human performance, what we're doing with MetaStage is bringing humans into the, into the metaverse rather than replacing that motion data with a digital double or you know maybe you know, whatever you've seen you've seen a lot of, of movies where people's performances are replaced with digital characters but that's not what we're doing in this case right well we're lucky enough that you guys have prepared a sizzle clip for us so let's uh, play that Being a being a sports fan, I mean, seeing the Dallas Cowboys clip and the UFC clip that immediately stands out to me. But maybe talk us through a little bit of you know what we just looked at, Christina. Sure. So there's a lot of different use cases that are featured in that video. We have um, we have a, we start off with a Samsung commercial with starring Charlie XEX, um, where the it was intended just for a TikTok commercial, so it wasn't an, an immersive activation. And the main performance of Charlie was volumetric, and all of the uh, creative editing and and cinematography was done in post uh, using VFX techniques. And then we also have. Uh, fashion with H&M, which was an AR pop-up, um, a lookbook where every page had a QR code. And when you scanned it, a di an AR diorama starring um, a lot of famous models would, would appear before you. As you said, a lot of sports content we've captured. 
you know, uh, over a dozen famous athletes teaching you how to how they do their signature move, which is especially cool when you can see them, you know, in 3D, you can like actually get up close to your favorite athletes and see how they how they move and how they do what they do. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys piece that was a location based activation at Cowboy Stadium for 5G enabled phones. So using your phone, you would you could trigger these, you know, AR almost superhero football players to descend upon the stadium during the during the game. And we also feature some of our legacy work with the with the Black Panther Party. We shot some of the Black Panthers from the 1960s talking about their stories. And um, and then also, I think we finished with the Halloween Kills activation, which was the very first volumetric Snapchat lens. Um, and it was Michael Myers from Halloween kind of coming at you with a with a knife. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, until you see the 200 foot high characters or what have you sometimes it's difficult to tell the real human from the hologram right which is also just exceptionally exciting when you see that level of fidelity yeah so what would be some of your favorite projects that you've done or looking to do well, some of them are featured in in there for sure. I, I'll bring up one that came out recently and that we're really proud of is a is a Coca Cola activation uh, that where and if you type in Ava Max, she's a pop star. If you type in Ava Max and Coca Cola, um, it's this really fun AR virtual concert in space. And if it basically you scan the Coca Cola can and then it, it triggers this whole like crazy AR virtual concert with Ava Max. So that one is currently online and look it up if you're interested in seeing something really fresh and original. I, I'd say in particular, um, I'm amazed at how much content they were able to squeeze through web AR on that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, some other highlights for sure would be, you know, Brianna's Garden, a piece that we had at South by Southwest this year where we, we captured Brianna Taylor's mother and sister. I mean, James, do you have any particular favorites that? that well, I mean, the, yeah, so the eye-opening one for me really was the Charlie XCX shoot, right? Um, so those who are interested, we did a, a panel recently at the uh, Spark Visual Effects Conference. Uh, where we talked about how that 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 use case in particular. Uh, so Charlie obviously came into a meta stage. I think it was a six, seven hour shoot, air conditioning, catering, very comfortable for talent. But what that meant we could do was take the hologram, bring it into Unreal Engine, and then the camera crew went in literally for three or four days of location shooting. So you see the location on the top of the skyscraper and you see the location in the in the jungle. But all of that stuff was virtual. And so really what 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 happened there was we got three or four days of location based shooting with only six hours of very comfortable sort of shooting environment for talent. And so when I saw that, you know, that was one of the key reasons why, you know, with Vancouver being such a hotbed of visual effects and movie making, obviously Los Angeles the same. You know, that was the the aha moment for me when I really understood why volumetric and visual effects and movie making and traditional television and movies were all, you know, about to splurge together and why we were so excited to, to bring the stage up here. Right. So is are movies kind of like the main vertical that you'd be looking at in terms of use cases or maybe talk about some of the other, you know, avenues that are being pursued with, with this technology? Well, sure. I mean, you know, when we launched the stage, I would say that almost in the beginning, almost 80 to 85 percent of our work was for augmented reality, um, usually um, mobile phone based AR experiences. For instance, like you scan a wine label and a scene comes to life or like the Coke can thing I just described. Um, but then, you know, I was happy to see that, especially with the, you know, ascent of the Oculus Quest, we started getting more virtual reality experiences. And I've actually seen a lot of that in the last year with training. You know, I think, you know, we, we VR training has proven to be very effective. But a lot of times when you see a VR training experience, the avatars are like these cheesy video game assets. So I'm on a mission to replace all those bad human characters in VR training with good, authentic human performances. Um, but to James's point, one of the most exciting developments of the past year was figuring out a way to use volumetric captures in the backgrounds, uh, and even in the case of Charlie as the hero asset for traditional films uh, and TV shows who are using virtual production techniques. So it's really anywhere where you need a 3D performance. And right. obviously XR always needs that. But I think with, with more VFX flows, like understanding the value of volumetric, I think it broadens our, our options. Right. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, sunglasses or glasses form factor wearables are really just around the corner now. You know, we've been looking at new devices. Magic Leap 2 just came out. That's an augmented reality device. HoloLens 2, 
And then some of the even smaller devices, you know, that you're seeing from companies like Lenovo with its Think Reality series and things like that. You know, the idea of being able to go to a museum, uh, potentially rent those devices and then see real performances standing next to their, um, you know, installations at these museums is really right around the corner. And so obviously we're getting ready for that type of mixed reality environment as well as, you know, as the metaverse starts to seep back into the real world through these kinds of devices, you know, we, we're confident that we'll be, you know, right there at the forefront of that development as well. Excellent. And one, one other question for you, James, in terms of the parent company, Amped Ventures, uh, we know they're kind of the, the hardware and infrastructure arm to uh, what Departure Lounge is doing with the Meta Stage. Um, how does this affect Amp moving forward? Well, I mean, it's been great. You know, obviously what's happened is as the Departure Lounge has started to have Technolo technological problems to solve or you know we start to need to push forward the kind of technology that we need to bring these experiences you know not only the capture of the the holograms but then also the deployment you know the web xr side of things it really does speak very you know solidly to what amp's mission is to be the hosting company of the metaverse right and you know departure lounge uh building our environment building the stage you know tackling these technological issues and trying to improve you know speed of capture and it's a huge amount of data that needs to be processed as we ingest the data from 106 cameras you know then how do you compress that in a time frame you know and obviously christine has been doing this for a couple of years now and so it's not like the technology isn't there but really amped is helping to sort of improve push the envelope where it can um, and, you know, with Departure Lounge, it's not only about the capture. We also now are starting to put the creative services team together to build some applications that use the holograms and use these things. And so even then, you know, Amps Virtual Studio, where we're able to work from anywhere and, and, and really sort of prove the utility of what we've been talking about with this hosted, powerful compute environment, you know, we're really able to sort of, you know, demonstrate the, uh, the effectiveness of that. And as we use it, that helps you know, with AMP's product roadmap. And, you know, so it's a really good symbiotic relationship there between the technology and the creative and the compute infrastructure that we need to, you know, like I said, create and deploy these experiences. Excellent. So, Christina, I mean, this type of, you know, volumetric capture, this, this type of system must be fairly expensive, is it, is it not, to, to utilize? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the Vancouver stage and, and MetaStage LA were both multi-million dollar uh, studios that, you know, so, and, and, you know, I want to throw a little shout out to our partners at Microsoft who developed the software that um, basically the Microsoft Mixed Reality Capture Studios developed the software that enables us to get like such incredible reconstruction and, and compression on these on these volumetric captures. So, you know, I think if you're going to to launch a premium product, you're not going to spare money you know, or you're not going to, you know, cheap out on the hardware because you know, we're trying to build like a product that will not only serve like high-end clients, but also be future-proofed, right? So that everything we're capturing now will stand the test of time as new display technologies and platforms emerge. So anyway, that's a long answer to say, yes, it is an expensive studio, but what you get is absolutely top-notch um, volumetric captures. So, you know, as, and when we first saw MetaStage, we absolutely wanted to do the partnership with MetaStage and Microsoft because it really is the highest quality uh, option that's out there. Um, but, you know, as we mentioned, you know, I, I, I was talking about Charlie XCX only needing talent for six hours, being able to do a shoot. For example, if you go see that full shoot, you can see this piece where the camera, because it's in virtual reality, is able to go through. Basically, they throw the camera 30 feet up in the air. Right. And that shot alone, if you were to do it IRL in real life, you know, would eat up a significant amount of the budget that was actually spent on the entire project, right? So yeah, to, to, to jump in on that, I mean, yeah. I do think that that is on the Charlie shoot and on other shoots that, you know, you're, they're finding that volumetric capture can be a big production cost savings. Um, and, um, you know, to work with with MetaStage is, you know, your projects are usually in the tens of thousands of dollars, I think, um, for most professional product production budgets that is doable and in particular if you're shooting if you're shooting your hero talent that way for a commercial to james's point it can be extremely challenging to bring them on location to get all the physical production gear um and and get all the shots that you need to get in a short period of time so well and also just from the creative and the storytelling perspective we're able to do things that you just wouldn't otherwise be able to do in real life right and so there's that component as well and so, yeah, you know, it's a big investment, but also, it, you know, we are we are seeing a lot of uh, adoption and, you know, Christina's stage down in LA has been very busy and, 
the anticipation, obviously, with the huge amount of mixed reality companies and sort of Hollywood North up here in Vancouver, uh, the anticipation is the same for the for the stage up here. Right. So what are you seeing in terms of demand, Christina, since you first started this project? You know, I think we've seen a healthy growth over the last four years. You know, when we when we started, it was a lot of initial proof of concepts. One of the exciting developments then as we went into year two and three, we're moving towards um, series like we did the AR Pro series with Verizon, which was, you know, a multi episode AR series. Same goes for a project called Career Day that is going that is going to be published at some point, you know, and hopefully in the near future. Again, it's an episodic AR um, activation. We also saw like a move, which was always part of the plan towards repeat clients. You know, that was our goal. Create a great customer experience and a confidence in the workflow that they can repeat project after project. And I'm happy to report we have a lot of repeat clients that just come in like clockwork, you know, every every month or every couple of months. Um, and then I think, you know, the, the Facebook rebrand to Meta and then the recent obsession with all things Metaverse, we definitely saw a big spike in the fall that we're continuing to service now with just a lot more excitement around anything that um, can, you know, bring virtual components to otherwise, you know, uh, events, events and experiences that were that were framed or in person. Right. And obviously that's a huge advantage for us because we get a massive head start. We can build on all of that, you know, expertise and knowledge that Christina and the team have developed down in LA. And so, yeah, we're, we're coming out of the gates running, right? So. Yeah, awesome. Well, we've been going at it for 16 minutes. This is a fascinating topic and, you know, I'm pretty sure we could go on for hours and you guys could talk for hours about this, but, uh, um, you know, I'll leave it with James, the kind of the final words is what to expect uh, for departure lounge here in the next you know few weeks or even months. Uh, down the road to to kind of what what kind of things to look out for? Well, I mean, you know, Meta Stage is really the ultimate foundation of what we wanted to do. Uh, Departure Lounge is called Departure Lounge. I think I've mentioned this before because it's where you go for your journey into the metaverse. Um, and obviously, we really want to nail that piece around human performance as being a key component of that. Uh, I think some of the other stuff that you'll see is not only human performance, but also the transfer of ob objects in and out of digital space. So we're working on that. And then also, you know, no no conversation about content in 2022 is complete without some reference to NFTs and Web3. And we look at that as the transfer of value in and out of the metaverse. So humans, objects, value. Um, but obviously, you know, we have we have work to do to make sure that MetaStage launches and grows very effectively. And, and that's the key priority for the, for the next few months, at least. Excellent. Christine, any final words from you before we call it? Just that we're so excited about Vancouver as 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 a place, as a market. We and I just I love Canadians. They're wonderful <laughs> to work with, and it's just been honestly a such a easy collaboration so far. So I'm just super grateful, and and thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining us. Looking forward to many of the developments, and looking forward to possibly having you back to to talk about some of those developments in the in the near future. Well, so, hopefully, you can come down and be turned into a hologram. Yes, I, I would I would love that. I, the hair and makeup required yeah, for me to to I'll be a production is going to. I'm in the middle of this. Awesome. Well, thank All you right. both, and looking forward to talking again soon. All right. Thanks, Ed.